This video is on the power law for exponents. Look at the expression x to the second power raised to the third power. One way to think about this is to write out what this means. x squared raised to the third power means x squared times x squared times x squared. Anything to the third power means to write that value out three times. But we also know what x squared means. x squared means x times x. So for each of those x squareds, I can write out x times x, x times x, x times x. Counting up what we have written is the product of six x's, which can be written more simply as x to the sixth. If you look back at the problem, you may notice that we could get that six exponent by simply taking the exponents of two and three and multiplying them, which leads to the power law. This is exponent law number two called the power law, and it just says if you are raising a power to a power, keep the base, just like we did in the first rule, keep the base, but this time multiply the exponents. In words, when raising a power to a power, you keep the base and multiply the exponents. Some examples. x to the second raised to the fifth power. We're going to keep the base. We're showing 2 times 5 because that's what the rule says to do. Multiply the 2 times 5 and we get x to the tenth. We may have more than one variable inside the parentheses at a time, which means we have to do two separate applications of the law. x squared y to the fifth raised to the third power. x squared raised to the third power means x to the two times three. y to the fifth raised to the third power means y to the five times three. This is just like distributive property. This exponent on the outside of the parentheses is going to apply to everything that's inside the parentheses. All we have to do to finish this problem is do that little biggie arithmetic right there and gets x to the 6th, y to the 15th. If there is a coefficient, it also needs to be raised to that same outside power. So this is the 2, the x to the 4th, the y to the 3rd, all being raised to the second power. If we write that out, that's 2 to the 2nd. It's x to the 4th raised to the 2nd. There's your 4 times 2. And then your 3 times 2. So 2 to the second gives me 4. Applying the rule right here, 4 times 2 is 8, 3 times 2 is 6. So be very careful with the coefficient. You have got to apply the same power to that coefficient. If the coefficient is negative, be very careful. When you write this out, you need to put that coefficient in parentheses. It is negative 3 raised to the fourth power. If you don't use the parentheses, you're going to get a wrong sign then we still have to apply the power rule to the 2 and the 4 there, giving us x to the 2 times 4. Negative 3 raised to the 4th power means a positive 81. x to the 2nd times the 4 there gives us x to the 8th. The reason this is a positive value is anytime you raise a negative to an even power, it will be positive. Just a note about an expression like this, there is no variable here. This 2 is not a coefficient, it is a base. It follows the rule. 2 to the 5th, raised to the 4th power, keep the base of 2, multiply the 5 times the 4, which gives us 2 to the 20th. So the 2 in this case is not a coefficient, it is a base and it follows the exponent law. If you have a fraction coefficient, like we did with the negative, we need to put that coefficient in parentheses. That 3 is going to apply to all of the things inside the parentheses. So I'm going to write out 2 thirds raised to the third power in parentheses because it's the entire fraction that has to be raised to the third power. And then for the x, there is a little 1 exponent sitting on the, one, on the x. So this is x to the 1 times 3, and it's y to the 5 times 3. When you raise a fraction to a power, you must raise the top and the bottom to that power. 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, 1 times 3 gives me 3, and 5 times 3 gives me 15. 